Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10, the Chimera. The Chimera is a hybrid creature that has changed a lot throughout the centuries. Depending on who you ask, the Chimera might look completely different. The word itself, which translates from Greek as she-goat, should give you a general idea about this horrible monster. But it is much more than a goat. It's said to have the head and body of a lion, the head of a terrifying goat on its back, and a venomous tail that ends as the head of a venomous snake. It's also only supposed to be female. The lion's head can breathe fire, and its snake tail is the head of the snake so that it can bite people. In some versions, the tail is an actual dragon head. Nobody knows exactly where the creature originated from, but most myths agree the Chimera was birthed from two monstrous titans, Typhon and Echidna, and was a sister to the Hydra and Cerberus, the famed three-headed dog from Hades' domain. The Chimera used to terrify the countryside of Lycia and burn everything until a hero was sent to slay her. The word Chimera has come to be known as something that's a mix of different attributes, so many animals are known as Chimeras. Even a person can be called a Chimera these days, but its origin goes back to Greek mythology, and according to the Greeks, the Chimera is one very specific creature. What's really interesting about a lot of the monsters from Greek mythology is that they share similarities with the Chimera. They are often hybrids, such as the Griffin, Pegasus, Medusa, and even the Minotaur. These are all creatures that share features with different animals, but it just so happens the Chimera is one of the most terrifying. Number 9. Beizi Beizi is a rather peculiar mythological beast from Chinese mythology. It's actually a holy beast, with its name translating roughly to White Marsh. And as it happens, there is another version of the creature in Japanese mythology called the Kutabe. The physical description of Beizi is a little confusing. It's definitely a hybrid, mostly looking like a white ox, but it has nine eyes, three of which are on its human head, and three eyes each on the sides of its ox torso, where there are two more human heads. It is also supposed to be able to grow to be the size of a mountain. Definitely creepy, right? It has two horns sprouting from each of its three heads and a total of 17 mustaches. None of this makes much sense, especially since legend also says that Baizi only has a single mouth. One of the biggest sources of controversy is the number of mustaches the monster has. Some say 17, some say 14, and some experts on Chinese mythology even say 33. In any case, Baizi is seen as a sign of good luck. It can speak any language it wants, it's extremely intelligent, and some legends even say that the creature knows every single thing in the world. The legend of the beast goes all the way back to 2697 BC, to the tale of the Yellow Emperor. The emperor had climbed a mountain when he came face to face with the creature. During a conversation, the Baizi supposedly told the emperor everything that he ever needed to know about the world, helping him to continue ruling with great wisdom. Number 8. The Wendigo there is no mythological creature more terrifying in Native American lore than the Wendigo. It's described as a skinny monster, with its rotten skin pulled tight over its bones. Its complexion was of gray ash, and it looked as though it had been dead for years. Its eyes were pushed into the back of its sockets, glowing fiercely red in the night. It looked like a skeleton that had just been dug out of the grave. It's horribly dirty, its body is usually covered in bursting sores, and it gave off a horrible stench of death, decay, and corruption. It's said to roam through the woods of Minnesota all throughout the region of the Great Lakes and even up into Canada. It's hard to say exactly what the creature is, whether it's a spirit or a monster. Some tales say that the Wendigo is nothing more than a ghost that possesses a human body and causes them to become a monster. Pretty much all the North American tribes lived in great fear of the thing. The Wendigo was a cannibal. It had a heart of ice, and it was sometimes even as tall as a tree. It left footprints of blood, it would eat any person who came into its part of the woods, and it practiced black magic. But the truth of the Wendigo is that nobody knows exactly where the legend came from. It's just one of those things that has kind of always been around. Some experts believe the story originated because of people who would become stranded in the brutal winters and resort to eating their friends. They made up the myth of the Wendigo to cover up their own cannibalism. 
Number 7. The Alux The Alux is a creature similar to a goblin and is native to what is now Mexico. However, if you were to ask somebody from Mexico today what an Alux is, they might not have any idea. The creature originated in the Mayan culture in the Yucatan Peninsula and in Guatemala. It was part of the Mayan mythology that emerged sometime around 2000 BC. It lasted until the Mayan civilization collapsed in 900 AD. Because their legends are so old, it's hard to pinpoint exactly which legend is the right one. Some stories say the Alux was a sprite, some say a spirit, and others say a goblin. What all the stories have in common is that the Alux was a mischievous creature. They were created by craftsmen as tiny statues that would later come to life and turn into goblins. What we have here is a Pinocchio type situation, except that the Aluxes would inherit the personality traits of their creator. Some of the craftsmen who were cruel would incidentally make mischievous Aluxes that tormented people coming out at night to scare children. The only way to pacify these beasts was to give them food, like honey or corn. Number 6. Cerberus Cerberus is the big bad hound of hell that guards the gate to the underworld. It also prevents the dead from trying to leave. Most of us are familiar with Cerberus as being Hades' pet pup. The great beast is often depicted beside Hades on his throne in the underworld. But Cerberus has a much more colorful history than just being a three-headed canine belonging to the Lord of the Dead. It was a child of Typhon and Echidna, just like other monsters like the Chimera and the Hydra. Typhon was actually considered to be the deadliest monster in all of Greek mythology, as he was the final son of Gaia and Tartarus, created as a final attempt to defeat Zeus during the war between the gods and the titans. Typhon was a dragon with over 100 heads that could all breathe fire. But all those heads didn't do much good, seeing as Zeus simply struck down Typhon with a thunderbolt and sent him scurrying away. Typhon eventually married Echidna, who became the mother of all monsters. They created Cerberus, the Nemean lion, the Sphinx, and much more. The Cerberus even had a little brother, Orthus, who only had two heads. But here's something pretty much nobody knows. The Cerberus was actually described as having over 50 heads, but when it came to artwork, drawing 50 heads was simply out of the question. It's believed that the description of the Cerberus was altered to have only three heads to make it easier for artists to draw. Number 5. Huldra In Norse folklore, Huldra is one weird monster. It's a female creature that starts out having long blonde hair, being absolutely beautiful and wearing a crown of flowers. At first glance, she is every man's dream, but then they see the one thing that's wrong with her. Huldra has the tail of a cow sprouting from the bottom of her spine. When Norsemen would witness this creature, they would see her cow tail and run in fear, but not all men ran away. She would sometimes seduce unmarried youngsters, lure them up into the mountains, and then refuse to let them go until they married her. If the man that she tricked and took into the mountains did agree to marry her, preferably in a church and in the presence of God, the beautiful woman would then turn horribly ugly. Sure, her cow tail fell off, but immediately after the ceremony, she was so ugly that people found it difficult just to look at her. And for some bizarre reason, she suddenly gained the strength of 10 men, making her brutish and insanely powerful. To be quite honest, this is one of the strangest Scandinavian myths, as it didn't even really seem to serve any purpose. The Huldra was just all around awful. What do you think the Huldra was inspired by? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more mythological creatures. Number 4. The Basilisk The Basilisk was a very deadly creature from European mythology and yet another hybrid. The Basilisk was a snake-like monster that hatched from an egg laid by a giant rooster and was then incubated by some kind of mutant toad. Its creation didn't really make much sense that people were scared of it regardless. The basilisk was able to wither landscapes, breathe death onto people, and kill just by looking at someone. One of the earliest descriptions of the basilisk goes back to the famous Roman historian Pliny the Elder, who was known for being something of an exaggerator. He described the basilisk back in 79 AD, but unlike the legends, he said it was only about 12 fingers in length, so only about a foot long. 
He said the vegetation it crawled through withered and died, and that it emitted a great stench of evil. The Romans believed that the basilisk was native to Libya, and that the Sahara Desert was full of these terrible snake-like monsters. They thought basilisks had turned the Sahara from a green wilderness into a barren desert. In truth, it was probably supposed to be a cobra. Somewhere along the line, it got twisted up by the Europeans, who didn't quite understand large venomous snakes. It's also said in the legends that the only creature the basilisk is afraid of is the weasel, which is quite similar to snakes in real life. Weasels and mongooses are notorious snake killers. It was after the collapse of the Roman Empire that the basilisk really grew into the myth we know today. It became less of a small serpent and more of a bizarre hybrid between a monstrous snake and a rooster. Number 3. The Irish Banshee We've all heard the expression screaming like a banshee, but have you ever wondered what a banshee really is? The banshee is a creature that originated in Irish myth. She goes by many names, such as the Hag of the Mist, the Hag of Blackhead, and a lot of other combinations that include the word hag. She was supposed to be a fairy woman linked directly to the realm of the dead. If you were ever to spot the banshee, you would need to immediately pray for the safety of your family because she was a harbinger of death. Witnessing the banshee typically meant that somebody in your family was about to die. Another nickname given to the banshee was Little Washerwoman. She earned this name because Irishmen used to witness the banshee washing bloodstains out of her clothing just before somebody they loved died. As for how the banshee earned her reputation for a terrible scream, it's because she would sometimes signal her arrival by wailing as loud as she possibly could. Her wailing was so intense that it could shatter glass and break windows. The banshee never actually harmed anybody. She was simply a messenger of doom. When she came, it meant bad things were on the horizon. This is why she was always screaming, weeping, and just being generally noisy. Number 2. El Coco Coco is another one of those ancient boogeymen, which like monsters, that went by many names. In Hispanic communities, El Coco is known also as Cucuy, Cuco, Cucuy, or Cuca. There is both a male and female version of this mythical monster. And if you happen to have grown up in a Hispanic household, you may have even heard the name mentioned before. The monster was something of an old wives' tale made up to scare disobedient children into behaving properly. Nobody knows exactly what El Coco looks like, but everybody knows it sometimes eats children. At least that's what parents tell their kids when they start acting out. It will either come in at night to immediately devour a child, leaving absolutely no trace of them behind, or it will steal them away to a horrible place where they can never find their way home. And don't worry, El Coco is always looking for disobedient kids. El Coco lives in the neighborhood and is said to hang out on rooftops at night searching for rotten children. El Coco is basically the opposite of a guardian angel, able to take the shape of a shadow to creep inside someone's home and eat their kids. Number 1. True Dragons Where did dragons come from? No other creature has perforated legends of every single society like the dragon. Yes, they look different depending on which ancient civilization thought them up, but they are all pretty much the same. There are dragons in Europe, China, and in Africa. But the myth of the dragon has a very simple explanation. Ancient people dug up dinosaur bones and mistook them for monsters. Well, it actually wasn't that much of a mistake. If you think about it, dinosaurs are the closest things that have ever existed to real monsters. As far back as the 4th century BC, the Chinese historian Cheng Chu was digging up dinosaur fossils and labeling them as dragon remains. But the origin of dragons goes even beyond dinosaur fossils. Some historians believe the Nile crocodile may have had a hand in inspiring tales of dragons in Europe. Thousands of years ago, the Nile crocodile had a much more extensive range. These dragon-like reptiles had likely swum across the Mediterranean to Italy and Greece. At over 18 feet long, they really did look like dragons. People probably mistook crocodiles for mythical monsters, starting legends that grew over time until they became flying beasts spitting fire at castles. It's 
kind of like how the basilisk went from being a small cobra in the desert to a hybrid serpent slash chicken monster. Thanks for watching! Which of these mythological creatures is your favorite? Which ones do you want to learn more about? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe and come back soon for more amazing videos. See you soon. Bye.